In chapter 1, you know the definition of material when every single object surrounding us as well as even a human body is made of matter or material. So what is the material or matter made from? Okay, one example from the material that we learn in the chapter 1 is metal. Okay, what is the one type of metal we have steel? Okay, so in the previous class, I mentioned to you steel is combination between serum and carbon. So you see, even for a steel, it made from two different elements, serum and carbon. This bofarum and carbon having their own different atoms. Even though every single element have their own atoms, however, every single atom can be defined by three similar particles, which it consists of protons, neutrons, and electrons. Okay, so how is this protons, neutrons, and electrons decide in an atom? You see here, this is one example of a model for an atom. In the middle of the atom, we have a nucleus. So inside the nucleus, we have both protons as well as neutrons. Surrounding the nucleus, we have electrons. So electron is moving surrounding the nucleus in the what we call electron cloud. This proton Neutron and electron has their own mass. And you see both proton and neutron having similar mass. Whereas electron is far lighter compared to neutron and proton. This proton is positive charge. Meanwhile, electron is negative charge. However, neutron is neutral. So by being neutral, neutron is the reason why the electron is not attracted to proton uh, in order to develop an atom. So an atom size is defined from the radius in the middle of the nucleus up to the outermost region that you can find electron within an atom. Talking about the atomic structure model. The theories and models of the atomic structure is long been developed back since 1803 uh, by John Dalton. So you see, this is how the first uh, model of atomic structure looks like. It's based on the idea of the Dalton where he threw up the foundation Greek idea of atoms from the word of atomos, meaning indivisible. However, if an atom is having subatomic particles, we see proton, neutron, and electron. This theory is not valid enough to represent the actual atomic structure. So, the theory and models of atomic structure is evolving from uh, John Dalton, goes to Thomson, Rutherford, and Niels Bohr, and then uh, they are scientists who enhanced the model of Niels Bohr, uh, we have the de Broglie and Erwin Schrodinger uh, in terms of the quantum model in 1926, where according to Erwin Schrodinger, electrons do not move in set paths around the nucleus. So it is not like the one claimed by the Niels Bohr, where electron is moved around the nucleus in a fixed orbit. But it is impossible for us to know the exact location of the electron because it is also behaving like a wave. So it's residing a region that we call orbital in the atom. Let's start first. Definitely uh, studying something which is about atomic structure, which is too small and we cannot discern this atom via our work. I, so the knowledge or theory about this atom is very complicated. So why do we need to learn this? So refresh our memory that what I already mentioned to you in the chapter 1. Where as an engineer, you need to be able to tailor the material property in order to achieve the performance of the product that you want okay, for the customer. Okay? So the task as an engineer that you need to tailor the properties of the material. And then I told you that that the material actually the combination of various elements or substances. So this element, even for the steel, right, it's made of a ferrum and carbon. So by understanding the atomic structure of the ferrum as well as the carbon, only that you can really understand how to manipulate these atoms in order to alter the structure 
for this particular steel material in order to achieve the properties that you want which end up is going to control the performance of your product. So definitely studying or knowing about this atomic structure theory is very important for scientists and engineers. So let's have a look. This is only one simple example that I want to show you. It's for the electronic material. So you see here is one example of electronic component. Even it is a very tiny component inside your smartphone or inside the television. You see it is from various material. One here at this region you have the substrate silicon. Here you have the poly silicon or polycrystalline silicon. Here you have silicide. Here you have nitrate spacer. So you see even for this silicide on poly crystalline silicon, the structure is actually polycrystalline. Meanwhile, for this part, which is nitrate spacer, is having amorphous structure. So even this tiny component has different type of structure. In order for this particular part of material to exhibit the properties that an engineer wants for the product. Talking about the importance of uh, knowing the atomic structure, understanding the periodic table of the elements is very important. So scientists arrange these elements based on the size of the atom as well as how the uh, atom is behaved. So every single atom is arranged in order. Okay, so as you can see here, we have hydrogen, we have lithium, and in this box, you can see that every single element is defined by two parameters which is we have atomic number z of atomic weight here is one example of the element which is copper so knowing how to read this product table very important take an example of this copper right okay so the atomic number which is z is the number of protons in the nucleus so the number of protons in the nucleus where you know at the beginning i mentioned an atom having nucleus where nucleus is a combination of neutron plus proton and is actually having electrons surrounding the nucleus that moving in the electron cloud. So, atomic number is the number of protons. In a neutral state, proton number is equal to the electron number. Whereas for the atomic mass, we are talking about the weight of the atom. Okay, so the specific atom having some of the masses of proton and uh, neutron within the nucleus uh, defines the atomic mass and it is also can be defined as the average isotope mass of the element in atomic mass unit okay so not every single element having similar neutron to proton number the neutron can be different so by averaging the isotope mass you can have the atomic mass for that particular element so one amu per atom is equal to 1 gram per mole. So, when you have number of elements which is equal to 6.022 times 10 to 23 atoms combined together or molecules combined together, you can have 1 mole of substance. So, for 1 mole of substance which is equal to the number of elements uh, based on the Avogadro number, you can have one gram of the material, okay? So, the reference of the atomic mass unit is based on the carbon, which is expressed as 1 over 12 the mass of carbon atom, okay? And the one atomic mass number or 1U is equal to 1.661 times 10 to negative 24 Gram. So you imagine the mass is very small, almost similar with the mass of neutron or even proton. The atomic model was firstly uh, developed based on the classical mechanics uh, in terms of the physical laws of nature, which includes the Newton's law of motion. However, the atomic model that is known today is based on the study of quantum mechanics, on the behavior of energy and matter that predominant or play a role at the atomic and the subatomic scale, talking about the behavior of electrons. So the scientists which uh, were responsible for the development of this current uh, quantum mechanics model is Bohr's 
which using the Rutherford postulate model and also the Broglie, Heisenberg and Schrodinger which modified based on the Bohr's atomic model to include the wave function where the electron is not only behave as particle also behave as the wave. So the current wave mechanical model is closely able to explain the atomic structure, electron position, electron energy as well as the electron configuration. Bohr's atomic model expresses that electrons in an atom will all be or go around the nucleus in a planetary manner. Just imagine the planet orbiting the sun. Okay, so the energy of Electrons are quantized, where electron has only specific energy value. So we have, according to the Bohr's atomic model, we have nucleus and we have the electron surrounding the nucleus which orbiting at a specific district orbital. And each of the electrons having a quantized or specific energy value. So one electron can jump or fall down to lower energy level by absorbing or emitting energy. So as you can see here, right? So we have this electron, we have this electron uh, absorbing energy, which is equal to the energy required for the uh, energy level. So it jumps to this higher energy level. And then when the electron losing the energy, it's going to fall back to the lower energy level by emitting the photon at certain energy value. So the energy required for the absorption for the emission it can be calculated based on this equation. Okay, uh, so we have the delta E, the energy difference that needed for the uh, transition is equal to the Planck constant times the frequency of radiation. Okay, so in order for the electron to jump to the higher energy level, it needs to absorb energy. The absorption of the radiation needed for that particular electron is equal to the delta E uh, equal to Hc over lambda, where C is also equal to the velocity of the constant and lambda is the wavelength of the radiation. Despite the Bohr's model already explain a certain aspects of electrons orbiting the nucleus, however, it is still has weaknesses. So, Lee de Broglie has suggested that electron is behaving like light or radiation. So, not only electron act as particle, but it also behaves as waves. So, waves produced by an electron confined in its orbit. So, it is not like it moving in a very specific or fixed orbit like one as mentioned by Bohr, but it is like moving in a wave. It's confined in its orbit, set up a standing wave. Okay, so issues on Broglie's idea uh, is if an electron travel as a wave, okay, so you know wave moving like this, right? So it has amplitude and it also has the wavelength. So according to Broglie's idea, if an electron travel as a wave, could you locate the precise position of the electron within the wave? Definitely not, right? So, so the D probably come out with something like this, the model for, for the atom, where the wave mechanical atom model. So this one, big spherical uh, line is based on the Niels Bohr model. However, for the D probably is based on the wave function. Okay, so it's based on the wave function. Okay, so Heisenberg, the German scientist, gives answers to the issue raised by the de Broglie atomic model. So in his theory called Uncertain Principle, he proved that we can never know both the momentum and the position of an electron in an atom. So we couldn't view electron as moving in well-defined orbits as the planet orbiting the sun. So Erwin Schrodinger is the Austrian physicist who derives a set of equations of wave functions for electrons. So his modification complement Bohr's model, the Broglie model, as well as the Heisenberg principle. So the latest utilized atomic model, which is uh, based on the Erwin Schrodinger is based on the modification in terms of the Bohr model, a de Broglie as well as the Heisenberg. Where according to Schrodinger, we could only describe the probability of where the electron could be. Okay, so the position of electron is 
only a probability. So the distribution of the probabilities form regions of space. So you see here, this is the probability, okay? Where at here is the probability zero at the nucleus. So definitely we cannot find the electron at the nucleus. So as it travels further away from the nucleus, the probability to find the electron at certain location is increases, okay? Like this. So the highest probability to find the nucleus is actually the region that we call orbital, okay? So the orbital is the electron density cloud where densest cloud area has the greatest probability of finding the electron. So you see here, the smallest dot, green dot, is actually the probability of finding the electron, okay? So definitely at this point, you see the electron that reside at this particular region is having certain amount of energy, okay, as we mentioned in previous slide. 